Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new year, 2022. It's a year of excitement, of fun, of fertility, and Ugh. butts. <laughs> but it is also God. full of all the games we played in 2021, which is what we're talking I'm about today. It's 2022 already, apparently. <laughs> I'm so Scratch sorry. This year. I'm so sorry. Um, anyways, uh, we are going to talk about all of our favorite games from the past year. Screw 2022. We're we're living in the past, baby. Um, I've been looking forward to doing this. We've got all four of us here. We've got the Ian Gibson. We have got Jake Terrio, and we have Kyle Bailey. Um, I can't. We're all here. We also have a oh, new overlay tease that I uh, put together quickly, realizing. The local chat could only support four people, so I had to quickly use one of the overlays I've been working on. So we look great, we look awesome, uh, and we're gonna get to it. I realize the music's been playing for a while. Are you guys yeah. excited to talk it's about 2021? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost like it's over. Oh my god. It's almost it like it's over. Can I? Can I? Can I ask you guys something? I mm. feel like everybody is acting like 2021 was an awful year. And I'm not saying it was great, but I feel like it's more a par for the course year. You know what I mean? I don't know it how was like, like personally, it was personally not... or globally, you know, what, yeah. how was, what do you guys think? Me personally, I it was just the same. It was 12 months of the exact same as the previous nine months. Um, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. For uh, for me, it was definitely 2020 part two. Mm -hmm. or dot dot v2 um it just felt like 2020 never ended and it just kept going so i think the fact that you know uh i'm gonna say it covid happened <gasps> i said it no one else can say it the entire rest of the time you mm -hmm. have to just call it the disease or the virus or something the disease. um, <laughs> <laughs> um the virus. i don't know it just it it, it melded so many things together that it just didn't feel like a different year happened so it is yeah. just kind of par for the course yeah, I can see that. I um, I I feel very much the same, except like there's some big things that like kind of like I moved this year, I got a new job this too. year, um, and then I had a baby. No, I didn't have a baby. Um, oh, but you know, like all that sort of stuff, I think kind of culminates. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hope she um, does not. <laughs> I gave birth to it. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that like kind of differentiates it. As far as video games, I didn't think this year was. I th I think there were some solid hits, but this year didn't feel like a like a two thousand eight or like a twenty thirteen. You know, like one well, of I those... think by and large, most of the stuff that came out this year was stuff that was supposed to come out last year. Also mm. true. So it's kind of like, yeah, you just delayed. Like, you know, we're, but we're nobody really made anything new. Yeah, but there wasn't. There wasn't enough that came out this year, and I, I said it on a previous episode, I think it was just Chris and I maybe, and I'm going to say it again. It's time to stop using COVID as an excuse. You know, it's been almost two years now. <laughs> Remote work is honestly not that hard to transition to unless your organization was not wow. great in the first place. So I'm looking at you, E3. Stop using it as an excuse, okay? It's just like... <laughs> So I hear you. I like 2020 is 100 percent. I understand. But 2021, like December 2021 is what? That's 15, 21 years months, 21 months after COVID started and everybody went work remote. So it's like if you can't figure it out by then and get your game out on time or at least have one minor delay, et cetera, and you're still blaming COVID. Something else. is. I feel like here. so. It, sorry, Will. Uh, I'll just say mine quick. I, I was going to say, I feel like this has happened at my job that around the middle of this year is when everyone realized they can stop stretching pandemic and start incorporating things for work from home environment. Like, oh, it took them that long. Like, it's like, hey, we've been stringing this along long enough that it's time to bring back things we did in the office, but remote it. You know, like, let's have these gotcha. meetings again. Let's have this type of stuff again. Because See, that's, we were, that's too long. Yeah. yeah, it's like, I mean, my job in particular, there was a, a takeover and a buyout and all that sort of stuff. 
and like consolidation. But I feel like a lot of video game companies were doing that where it's like, hey, we're only doing this for a little bit longer, a little bit longer. And now it's like, hey, we're going to do this for a while. So let's let's start putting those like production things in place and we can get these games out. Yeah, it's just it's weird because with my job before the pandemic, like years before the pandemic, we started going remote and it wasn't literal. It was just like there were people who worked who were at the office two days out of the week. The rest of the time they were remote. And then we kind of just had this weird thing where we all transitioned to we're not really going to meet in a conference room unless we absolutely need to. And there's a lot of people. We're just going to do Teams meetings, even though we're all in the same office. And then five, four or five months after the pandemic started and we all started working from home, my company was just like, hey, uh, the lease is up on the Baltimore office. So we're just going to get rid of the Baltimore office and you guys are just all remote permanently now. <laughs> so my my company pretty quickly was just like, uh, we're already in the cloud. We've got a, like a handful of servers we should move to the cloud, but I guess everybody's just remote now. That's fine. You know, yeah. and, and that, that's that's a little bit quick doing it in a couple months. But man, by the end of 2020, if you were not fully embracing the remote lifestyle for your employees and realizing it was going to last, that's that speaks to an organizational problem. I'm sorry we're off on a tangent here, but stop using COVID as an excuse. people. <laughs> yeah, for, video games. Oh, we can't do it anymore. It's, it's COVID. We got to push it. We got to push it. It's like, no, nah, it doesn't work anymore. Not anymore. Yeah. Um, so we are here to talk about the best and the brightest of 2021. Uh, we've got a rough schedule um but uh that was the intro portion of the podcast folks uh now we move into the main discussion uh which we're gonna do each person goes through their shout outs uh and then three two one and uh we kind of discuss it like that and then move on to the next person um that way we kind of just like get through it i i, I don't um foresee a ton of discussion uh which it, it, there definitely will be um i don't know how we want to handle if someone's game is on someone else's list and we want to discuss it um we well, just i think i think we just roll round, with it, i think round, we just roll with table. it as it happens if, um, if there's more if there's more to talk about and i think the other thing is that we are not picking a number one there's no real contention yes, here totally and i i think we can all be civil and not be like your your pick sucks but i think we can have some discussion about like hey i'm glad you really enjoy that game it didn't really work well for me but i did at least appreciate these things about it when i played mm -hmm. it so this yeah. is we are we are celebrating the games of 2021 in here and not necessarily picking out winners and losers Totally. Yes. So Forza Horizon Five wins our no. Uh, <laughs> exactly what Ian said. Game of the year. <laughs> game of the year. <laughs> oh, one more, more thing more. I did want to say. We we are probably going to talk about spoilers in this. I know there are yes. some spoilers in here that we have not touched on at all throughout the year because they're important spoilers, and I absolutely want to discuss them. We'll call them out as well when we get to them. But just be be alert. There's probably going to be some spoilers in here for some games that you haven't played. Yes, Dumbledore may die. But we will move on. May? May. Um, Isn't he a mortal? I'm sorry. I don't mean to take a tangent. Never mind. I'm thinking just again. slowly Anyways, remembering details. Um, so I had us going in alphabetical order by last name. Did Harry Potter go to heaven? <laughs> Did that happen in the final <laughs> one? Did he go to heaven? Or was it purgatory? No, he used the sorry. resurrection Lim Lim stone. It's so open to interpretation. God. Gosh. It's the same place the people one. from Lost went to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh. This is the second this time I've talked about Lindelof lost. write the last Harry Potter movie. <gasps> yeah, and the fray performed it. I knew it. Um, so I, I, <laughs> we don't have to do alphabetical. If anyone wants to go first, they can go first. Uh, I have. You I have just no wanted problem. to go first, or no? Kyle would have gone first. Kyle would have gone forgot what Kyle's last and name. No, I did have first. an order. But if anyone's raring to go, like you, pee pee pants, do you want to? No. You want to go first? Let's oh, just do the order. First. Let's do the Fine, order. Let's do the order. Kyle goes first. Then Kyle do it. Jeez, Did you get for okay. having a last name with a B in it? Well, Sorry. at the beginning. Thanks, mom. Or dad, actually. Thanks, dad. <laughs> um, <laughs> Literally um, the wrong parent. <laughs> um, I mean, she had something to do with it. Um, okay, so we're doing, we're doing not our top three first. We're doing just like games that we really liked. That yeah, we, so, so we you'll do your shout outs, then you'll do, and we can discuss, then you'll do number three, number two, and then... <laughs> Okay, um, I don't have too many shout outs. There was a game that I found via Twitter because of a bad story that happened to the developer where 
a bunch of people on Steam didn't think that the price tag of, I think it was $6 and then it was $4 on a Steam sale was worth it because the game could be finished so quickly. I think it was under two hours or whatever. So they were like, oh, well, this game's under two hours. I'm going to play it, beat it, and then refund it through Steam. And oh, yeah. this this developer, I believe he's a Russian developer, um, sort of said like, this sucks. Like this, I'm losing money because of this on something that I worked on really hard. I felt really bad. I reached out to him on Twitter and we had a little bit of back and forth and um, he just seemed like a really genuine person. I went and found uh, a bunch of his games on Steam and bought them. They're all really cheap. And one of them in particular stood out to me. It's called Summer of 58. And it's sort of like a walking horror kind of game. Again, it's mm -hmm. not like super... It's, it's made by, I think, one or two people. Um, so it doesn't have like a ton of amazing things but it's really dense and tightly constructed and it's just very spooky and horror filled i thought it was very good and definitely worthy of mention um check it out it's again you can buy it on steam right now for um five dollars and 12 cents here Ooh. in the united states of america well yeah um, i'll try to on, on any sale. any shout outs like that and probably our, our st anything that's not easily findable like our big stuff uh i'll try to put in the youtube description yeah yeah you know what? actually i'm gonna it. i'm gonna make a running list that's a good point so i'm okay. just gonna thank keep a you list. Right. yeah so it's summer of 58 and it's by emika games which is e-m-i-k-a games i think um great great stuff and there's other his other stuff is great too um another one which will was along for the ride with me but poppy playtime this oh, was like yeah. the most amount of horror games i ever played in a year which was not that many um, but it was it was fun to play. I really like this game. It was and terrifying. It it was terrifying, but there was something was. very, very tight about it. Like it's it just it was so simple when like looking back on it and how for how creepy it was. The presentation's really well. The backstory is is um is is just there and present, and you're thinking about it constantly. I really liked it, and it was scared the bejesus out of me and Will. Um, yeah. And that one it was, it was a lot of fun. There was that one scene after we like put the toys together and that big door opened, and we're yeah. both like, "Okay, so There's something's something coming out of that come door." Out of this, yeah. Like we know that's gonna happen. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. This we thought it would be a smaller poppy, but it was this giant poppy. Yeah. But the part that was terrifying is like you turned around to run, and the game, the game knew at that moment when you turned around because it popped the vent open for like eye contact like a, for you like to see to go that flashing. way yeah and like an yeah. emergency light so you ran oh, that way that's good and it was very well done because it was absolutely terrifying and you were just making random turns in those pipes and i think those those are vents and i think those vents were designed not to trap you but all to lead to the exit but it made you feel like you were guessing the right way it's, which is a really good feeling it's dead end linear, which yeah. is like you find the dead end before you find the way to go. But there's enough time to to find the right direction to go, but still feel like you're being chased. And yeah. the sound design in that game is so good. It's so tense with the music. And like when you're in that vent in that section, it sounds like there's something right behind you clanging oh, on all these so vents and walls. And it's just like it's it's really, really good. I will um, never play that game, but that sounds really, really <laughs> and good. And you can and you can beat it in like what was it 40 minutes or yeah or it was only like the that? first chapter was out so uh, hopefully by next yeah. spooky pixel there'll be a couple more out yeah um are we also highlighting games that that didn't come out this year yeah you can that's that's mostly what shout outs was for is like anything you played that couldn't be eligible okay uh, i well. wasn't i i wasn't sure if we were doing that or not but i do have one game i played it early this year um for i think the second time and just remembered how good it was is a tiny little game side scroller called gunpoint um it came out in 2017 i think or, or or 2016 something like that again really simple sort of like uh shooting and jumping you play a little spy and you have to like break into these it's like a 2d side scroller thing really fun very uh very short but but quirky and and uh it's just a ton of fun. Definitely recommend playing that game. Thanks. Um, okay. All right. So on to my like top three, I guess. Um, I will start with my third one. This is the only game I think I've ever bought and played based purely on memes that I saw. And it was like, it, it looked so 
interesting that I just had to get it, and it is Resident Evil Village. Ooh. Ooh. Good pick. Solid pick. So I I will straight up say I do not play Resident Evil games, and I really don't play that many horror games, despite two of my <laughs> recommendations being horror games. Um, see, that's what Subpixel's here for, is opening up our horizons and, and you know expanding stuff. Um, but Resident Evil Village, the memes started with Lady Dimitrescu, and like the whole sort of like big tall lady vampire stepping the internet got real horny yeah every, everyone mixed. got real horny and i started seeing um uh not just memes but like screenshots from the games and hearing about uh twitch streamers playing it and then my friends started playing it and i was like do i really want to get like a resident evil game because it's just not really my scene i played resident evil 4 on my gamecube like back when it came yeah. out and i was like yeah this is fun. like it was a good game but i was like it's not for me but something about resident evil village just really spoke to me and it, it like it worked so well and i think it's because at least for me personally there's a crazy level of detail like that world is so lush and it's it's actually like gorgeous and gothic to look at and it's just it's very it's very realized but there's also a ton of insane resident evil horror ideas mixed into that world and it just makes a really good case for sort of the purpose of resident evil existing is to like explore these crazy new ideas and and have these crazy characters um it's more like muscly it's more gun focused than than sort of mystery and like sneaking and running away from stuff that's there but it's a lot more gun slash upgrade focused and it actually kind of made me think it to me, it felt a little bit like Far Cry 3 moment where it's like mm -hmm. they're sort of introducing a bunch of these new things and a sort of a different take on a world that people have played previously or a, a, a game universe that people had played in previously. And it just felt like they were taking all these different things and expanding it and kind of having fun with it at the same time. Um, yeah, I, I thought that it was really well balanced and, and really entertaining to play through. And it had a ton of cool characters, which have like stuck in my brain since after playing it. But yeah, did you guys did you, was that on anyone else's list or, or did that's, anyone else play it? That's on my bigger list. I think it's four or five, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I absolutely love that game. I think it it did what Resident Evil 7 like took that Louisiana Bayou true detective stuff and turned it into Resident Evil perfectly, and Resident Evil Village took the Dracula gothic horror and turned that into Resident Evil perfectly, because, like, they added all that stuff and put that Resident Evil spin on it with puzzles and stuff, and it wasn't like they just textured it. They, like, really melded the two together, so it wasn't more of one yeah. or more of the other. Um, and also, that game is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, and the I like to describe it as the Call of Duty section at the end of that game is yeah. so it's I think people complain about it, but it's such a breath of fresh air and like really cool um, that I, I highly recommend it for that. And also, I think the story of Ethan Winters through seven and eight is actually pretty cool and kind of what they reveal and the twist and all that sort of stuff is neat. Um, I know a lot of people find him annoying uh, and an airhead, which he is, but. He just so wants dumb. to protect his daughter and his wife <laughs> yeah. who lied to him for years. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. I didn't I didn't get a chance to play this game. Neither um, did I. But I I remember when it came out, everybody was talking about it. All the gaming podcasts I was listening to were talking about it, and they were so surprised by the different gameplay mechanics and designs and directions that it took and how well all of it was done you know like the call of duty level they were talking about the puzzles they were talking about some like the the the, the dark humor the black comedy in it um how the first person is working even better than it did in uh in seven uh not to say seven didn't work but just that they're continuing to do that and expand upon it um and it just felt like they are just reveling in so many new ideas in that series and firing in all cylinders and to hear somebody do that rather than just put out like oh it's another one it's basically the same as the last one so it's still good but to hear them try new stuff is it's always exciting yeah yeah and i would it, I, i've also been meaning to tell you ian personally i, I know you probably still won't play it because it's a horror game but for me who doesn't like horror games but still plays them i found resident evil 7 was like 10 times scarier 
oh, than is this terrifying. game. Seven is it's not terrifying. This game is not it's... terrifying. The only thing that's the only thing that's really scary is like the dolls. Yes, that's, there's an entire like, dollhouse. <laughs> yeah, and a thing um, in that basement that is also <laughs> terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but so Resident Evil uh, Village, go play it. It's awesome. Kyle's uh, number, my number two. My, yeah, that was my number three. My number two. Um, I just, I it took me a while to get to this game, and I actually had to borrow it from my brother um, to play it because I'm a cheap bastard. Um, but it is Metroid Dread. Or the mm. Nintendo Ooh. Switcheroo. Good pick. Good pick. Yeah. Um, I remember. Uh, I grew up on playing a lot of GBA games, and on me and my brother, we shared a Game Boy SP, so we played a lot of those games on the SP. And you know, we would trade. One night, I would have it, and then I would forget to charge it, so that it had to charge in my room, so that I could get it the second day. Um, and then <laughs> we grew up on playing Metroid Zero Mission and Metroid Fusion, and. Those games plus Pokemon were sort of like the bread and butter for the games that I grew up on. And something about Metroid Dread just speaks so much to those two games specifically, but also the Metroid series as a whole. It's a nice encapsulation for what the series stands for and what it what it used to mean and what I hope and think it will mean in the future. So it's very fusion like in that there's sort of like a kind of creepy horror element with these um, Emmy uh, robots that you have to fight um, mm -hmm. or like alien robot things that you have to fight. And there are a whole different sections that focus on exploration. And then they mix those exploration sections with completely terrifying, like, I don't know how I'm going to get out of the situation. Yeah. I have to fight this thing that I know I can't fight, but I can maybe fight off against it for enough time to get me out of this section. Um, it's very sort of dynamic in how it, it plays with your expectations, but also like the different types of emergent gameplay that you can find within it. And it, again, like I said, it reminded me a lot of Metroid, but it's very streamlined and it's way more difficult, but in a good way. Yeah. It's not it's not needlessly difficult. It's earned, um, which I think is a testament to the developers and like how much they must have not just play tested this game, but talked about just the different dynamics that are going on behind the scenes and how um, the AI is is tweaked and and the, the different expectations that you can build as a developer for players and, and for different systems, I think is really cool. There's also, and this is a staple for Metroid, but I think it's really cool that there are a lot of teases throughout the game of things that like, hey, I'm in this room and I can see something on the other side. I know I can't get to it right now, but I know I'm going to have to come back and get to it. Um, and there are even some parts where you think you can't get to a place, but you try and try and try again. And eventually the game just will let you, if you're good enough and lucky enough, the game will let you do something that you probably shouldn't be able to do until you have like an upgrade. But it's like, if you can reach it, you can reach it, which I think is really cool because it sort of rewards hard work and, and mastery of controls and stuff like that. Um, there's a great sense of mystery to it. And there's some really cool story stuff um, that I actually don't want to spoil because. Uh, I think it's it, it. If you're a fan of the series, it's it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. But all in all, I was a really big fan of Metroid Dread. It's got really good controls on the Switch, which uh, not a lot of games can say because Switch is kind of wonky sometimes. But it just feels good. It plays good, and um, it's great. It's fun and it's very scary and difficult. Yeah, I, I've only played a couple hours of it because I picked it up recently. But I, I was never really a big Metroid or side scroller person, and this game is. Like you said, it's very well designed. A lot of teases definitely encourages exploration. So it's it's hard to put it down once you picked it up. You've always got, oh, I'll go back to this area. Oh, I'll try to do this now. Oh, yeah. I just got this ability. Let me go backwards. Lots of great stuff there. Yeah. Awesome. Um, OK, if no one else wants to talk about that, we will move on to my number one, which I <gasps> believe is going to be. Central to this is my uh kyle sign language for central um it's going to be on a couple people's lists i hope but it is cyberpunk no i'm just kidding um it, 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 <laughs> oh, man. i was gonna make that joke <laughs> oh thank god it's not eligible oh my oh my god no it is daniel mullins games inscription wow wow so you did play it because last time we talked i think you said you were going to play it i was going to play it i have since played it it is so good. I know so Ian good. said he wanted spoilers, but I haven't played Inscription yet, so please don't. I, I, 
We we okay. I, we can we can talk about this without. We don't spoiling. have to talk about spoilers okay. right now. At some point, we will talk about spoilers. We will let you know, and you can walk away. Yes, yes. I promise you that. Um, okay. I all I, I all I will say about I wrote my notes without um, spoilers, and there there's some there's some. Do you, have you seen the trailer, Jake? Do you know like? Oh no, watch I'm... the trailer. Don't watch the trailer. Don't watch I've... the trailer. Gives away way too much. Don't watch the trailer. <laughs> I've seen yeah. several trailers. I've played Daniel Mullen's other games. I'm. I th- th- when I said I think before we started that my game of the year list is probably going to be different as I play more games from 2021. Yeah. I'm expecting that Inscription will posthumously be my 2021 game of the year. I just haven't had a chance to sit down and play it yet. But I'm gotcha. quite familiar with Daniel Mullen's brand yes, of game design. Yeah. As yeah. someone who's been um, trying to get us to play Pony Island for a very long you time. You should all play Pony and, Island. And the probably, Hex. yeah. Um, yeah, so Daniel Mullen's games, as Jake uh, just mentioned, he is a extremely unique uh, game developer and designer who. How, how, do you, how would you describe him, Jake? It's as... really it's really kind of a weird because I've I've interviewed him. We've got a couple of videos on the Subpixel channel for people who are maybe interested in hearing about Daniel's game design in his own words. It's. Um, I mean, I know the the word subversive has kind of got a bad rap in recent years, but I think that that kind of is a bit of the crux of what his games do, is you, you, you start the game thinking it's one thing, and then as you go, you're like, oh, wait, this is something, this is totally something else, and it just kind of keeps doing that the whole time, yeah, until you yeah. get to the end, and you're like, where where did i even start what is this (laughs) it's sort of it's sort of like loops within loops where you go around a circle so many times and then it suddenly branches off into a new circle and then you Mm. do that for a while and then you branch into another one and maybe another one and then you realize how they're all connected Mm -hmm. and why they're all connected and it just sort of is this great like confluence of like i can't believe it makes sense, but also works gameplay wise, but also someone designed it this way. And it's like, it's, it's so many interesting ideas on top of one another that are layered in a way that introduce things to you that feels natural, but feels weird, but feels right at the same time. And it, it, it's so interesting, but inscription specifically, the way you just described it, Jake is exactly how it unfolds. Basically Mm -hmm. it starts off as one thing, way down the end of the line it's it's something very different but also yeah. very similar um and uh it's it's a uh how would we describe it like a rogue like card building game kind of yeah Builder. i think yeah. i think it's rogue like card building game and i think the other way to describe it without giving away too much is it's frog fractions um yeah. that's probably as much as i would say spoiler free yeah um i i and you could talk about i think i think it's fine to talk about the first act without getting into too many of the surprises yeah but i just want to say you're in a cabin you're playing a card game etc yeah i know we'll get we'll talk about this a little bit more maybe perhaps when my list happens um but i can hear leshy talking right now (laughs) still it's the it's the it's the best oh anyone has ever done making a NPC talk without using words. It's like yes. a womp womp. It's like womp, it's womp, so womp. good. I just want yeah. I want my I want Siri to talk to me like that. I don't care if I won't be able to understand them. Just talk to me <laughs> like that. Um his previous two games, the the kind of the the you know Charlie Brown parents talking is how all the characters talk in Pony Island and the Hex as well. Oh, it's so good. It's it's such a good sound design decision because it yeah. it like really separates it separates the game from like like anything else you've experienced because you're not expecting it, but then it works so well within like the and it, world. And it, it characterizes the character because you yeah. associate the sound even though you don't mm-hmm. have a voice. There's actually um, it's like not a tangent. Like yeah, it's, yeah. There's a someone did a video years ago. I, I forget what channel about uh, how you comprehend text in video games better when it has the dee, 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 like how SNES games would have that like cadence. Like you yeah. you hear them talking. Like yeah, cadence totally. Um, it's just it's it's that it's HD that. Uh, it's like it's so good. And that's also so, without without giving anything away, um, the design of everything. I mean, there's there's mm-hmm. several levels of that design that sort of change and shift. But like 
the thought and care that went into everything. I know we, I sort of talked about this with all my games. So maybe that's a through line. It's just, I like games that have had developers take their time and really put a lot of details and stuff into it. But inscription feels unique in how it uses that design to its, to its benefit and to add mm -hmm. to the mystery because there's a lot of stuff and Ian I think when we talked about this on the last local chat I was on I can't remember what but you you uh mentioned something happening within the first like 20 to 40 minutes of of, yeah, of the game oh yeah and I I remembered it happening or I remembered you telling me as it happened and I said I literally said to myself I was like this feels so much better than I thought it would when when yeah. Ian told yeah. me about it because I was like, yeah. oh well, that's a that kind of sounds like kind of weird, and then you experience it and it's like, oh, oh. it's like it's like oh. the whole like the world, yeah. like literally the world opens up a lot, and it's it's like it's this weird sense of oh um, yeah, like I mystery. Can't wait. It's, it's so good. It's so good. That's it's really good. good. I, I yeah. when I interviewed him. I th uh, maybe almost two or three years ago now, he had just released um, uh, as Pony Island had started with a game jam game. He had released a game jam for for a, g a game from that he made for Ludum Dare called Sacrifices Must Be Made, which is it's the core gameplay. It's the card building of Inscription, and I think he had announced that he was going to make it into a full game. Um, nice. And I was I was interested. I want to. To contact him again and interview yeah, him let's again. Get him, let's get him on the show. Because Pony Island, he said, had started after he had uh, run a failed Kickstarter for a what he called a Pokemon Magic the Gathering hybrid called Catch Monsters, where <laughs> it, it had elements of that went into Inscription, where you could like sacrifice the the Pokemon to get other things. Um, and so I want to know like how much of that tied in. Yeah, uh, if you if you reach out, uh, ask if he would be on an episode of Local Chat as well. That'd be I will. That'd be great. Um, but yeah, so those are my three games. I don't, I don't want to talk anymore um, for, for nice. Jake's sake, but yeah. uh, Resident Evil Village, <laughs> Metroid Dread, and Inscription. So that's yeah, my I, awesome. I know we said no judgment, but solid picks. Yeah, Kyle. solid pick. That I thought you were going to come in here with picks. crap, and you came in wow. here. Wow. Yeah. No, yeah. I really um, wanted to put something bad on, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Far Cry 6. Um... <laughs> So it's my turn. Uh, I oh, I thought long and hard about this list. Uh, first, my shout outs. Um, and Kyle's list is really good. Uh, I'm sorry. My shout outs. Uh, I wrote them down here. Uh, QI roll. Uh, first shout out to RimWorld uh, for being oh. the oh. best game uh, probably ever made. Um, but I'm mostly <laughs> announcing it because Ideology came out this year. The new DLC expansion, uh, adding religions and all sorts of nonsense to a game that's already full of nonsense. And uh, I thought it was quite gay, great, quite great, quite great, uh, and very quite fun. great, quite great. Next, Next game, game, please. Next, Next game. game. Let's uh, keep it moving here. Uh, 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 final contender here. Uh, Banner, uh, Banner Saga. I beat the first game. It was yes. very good. Oh it's incredible. Gosh. I'm already on two. Um, God, those games better. they look so so good they, also, look, the they music, even look good on by Austin Wintry so yes oh. in the like Austin oh, Wintry no. can't miss oh, so good yeah oh, so good um, also shout out to Pokemon Fire Red it may have made me like Pokemon and wow spoiler but spoiler I was not expecting that that's, and uh, final that's shout out to success. Dragon Quest 8 Journey of the Cursed King I gave you nice. 51 hours of my life and you gave me 51 hours of pure joy um a fantastic jrpg as my jrpg pretty much chrono trigger doesn't count uh moving on to my actual list i slammed my list down like i was done with it number three goes with the three because it is hitman three is my number mm. three hitman three an excellent game uh i've mentioned this multiple times um it is the crescendo of a brilliant series uh it is a swan song added some incredible levels, upgraded a lot of the physics. Uh, story was fun, okay, the way Hitman is, but the things you got to do in those levels were kind of crazy, like Berlin, where you're the one being hunted and you have to figure out your targets. Uh, from that to... Uh, That's like the rave, the nightclub. Yeah, the yeah. rave nightclub. Yeah. And then uh, 
murder the, mystery. The murder mystery is crazy. Uh, oh, the great. winery where you can just crush everybody in a wine press uh, <laughs> yes. is really great. Um, I, I I just want to say that level was crazy because I went to the to the the vineyard section and they're just like I was expecting to be like there is a gardener and it was like no there's like the head of the vineyard there's like four levels of people who yeah. work there's like twenty garden implements there's like four different sheds and it was like wow they added a lot of depth to this vineyard yeah it was wild um, the last level I think has a lot of contention with it I think it's not a great hitman level but it is a great level All the stuff you do in it uh, you wake up in that level and then open a door and you realize you are completely somewhere else. Yeah, it's is, a good reveal. It's so good. It's such yeah. a good reveal. Um, and it also works really well with the story. Like, I, I don't think it would have worked if they just did another Hitman level. It wouldn't have worked yeah. as the final mission. Totally. I, I can't wait for IOI's James Bond game. I'm sad they're leaving Hitman. Mm. I am excited they announced the season two and at least showed a map, a new, new map. Yeah. So here's hoping. Only uh, thing that would have made that last level better is if it were on a blimp. Yeah. <gasps> a a be train that circles a blimp. blimp. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't played yeah. it, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> Man, if I could You're live in Columbia. Columbia. Yeah, that, uh, that really is. Wow. <laughs> where, uh, we were somewhere where I... That's I, my game of the year. I remarked it <laughs> felt like we were in Columbia because there were... Oh, it was the Liberty Bell place in Philadelphia. In Philly? Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, I just I, want to say, did not agree with that comment at all. It was no, kind no, of, no. Oh, it's American history. That reminds me of Bioshock Infinite. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it was particularly that poster that was just like, it was like for the oh, centennial yeah. or something. It was like Go America, and it like it was clearly the one they based that like horrible one off of in Colombia. Yeah, so, that's why. Yeah. Anyway, shut up, you stupid man. Um, my <laughs> number two pick. I hate you. My number two pick, folks. Folks, my number two pick, Inscription. What? Wow. Inscription. I'm surprised it's number two. I'm I don't want to jump ahead, but now I'm curious two. what number one is. Woo. Ooh, Forza. Uh, Inscription, an incredible, 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 incredible video game. I can't say it enough. I've been so listening dang. to the soundtrack uh, nonstop. There's, uh, it's on Spotify, but it's grayed out. So I went and bought the soundtrack off Steam. There you go. Uh, the you. first song on the album is 15 minutes of Leshy's Cabin ambiance. It's and so it mm. will mm. absolutely complete your day. Um, it's, I, I don't, Jake, I don't is, want to... Jake is shifting in his seat because he can't listen to it yet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's, it's also the same composer as Pony Island and The Hex and all great soundtracks. Yeah. I, I don't mean to say something bad about the game, but one of the complaints I had about it was that music was so good, but it was like it was mixed a little low, so I had to crank my sound to like twice of what it normally is just so I could sit there and be like, and just like live in that cabin. And I was like, oh, I wish I didn't have to turn my speakers up so <laughs> I do, loud. But. I, I actually, I do have one complaint for the game. And surprisingly, Whoa. it's not the music. One single complaint, and it's the text speed. I normally always bump my text speed up like all the way because mm -hmm. I want to get through. The, the cards have text this is not giving anything away but the cards have text on them that changes sometimes it's, it's, i've and, seen and that appear yeah. yeah yeah and i bumped that crap all the way up and i could not read i i would get like flashes of a word and i was like this is way too i don't know who can read that <laughs> but like it was it was way too fast. So I, I, I bumped it back down a little bit also we did get um a, we got two comments uh one from victor louise spangler who said last year for me was kind of weak for games but inscription really is one of a lifetime experience easily one of my favorite plays ever or games ever so cool awesome yeah, he I'm, just, well. I'm so excited uh, watching the career trajectory of daniel mullins yeah, because I, I, yeah, I can't wait for his assassin. Uh, he's going places for sure. I can't, I can't wait for Far Cry Seven from Daniel Mullins, where it's just <laughs> I would play that the same game. I cannot and he's wait. Well, dead if you, eyes if you just sit in Leshy's cabin for seven minutes, it actually he gets up and shakes your hand, and you yeah. you actually just win the game. Jake, um, I, mm. I'm so upset because now you make me think that somebody's going to come and swoop him up and stuff him in some shitty game franchise. He's going to die forever. He's gonna well, be I will let you know if you've not watched the subpixel videos where I talked to him that he did work. I don't remember if he told me what studio he worked at, but he was 
he was doing code at like a brick and mortar AAA studio and okay. he didn't like it and he wanted to go That's full fair. indie and Pony Island gave him the resources to do that because it was, you know, a runaway hit. Um, That's good. So I don't think he has any plans to be bought out yeah. anytime soon, regardless of this inscription being the first one that he had like a real publisher for. That's good to hear. Good. I want all of his games forever. Um, yes. I will say the other thing I was playing because Ian and I do family share, uh, despite not being family. Uh, so I was playing and then I told myself, I said, as soon, I like this game enough that as soon as Ian's playing another game, I'll just go buy it so I can keep playing it. And sure enough, it happened. And I bought the game and 15 minutes later, I thought I was rolling credits and I was so mad that I spent $15 <laughs> and then I realized it was not a, a thing happened. It's and I, I said, I out loud swore and walked out of the room to go show Karen <laughs> what was happening because it was so wild. Um, yeah. yeah. So that is my number two, my number one pick for the year 2021 folks, get ready. Hold on to your socks is the game valheim folks Ooh. valheim nice. is the perfect survival game it's the best survival game i've ever played um <clears throat> it has astounding design from uh the need the the fact that they they strip down the food gives you food gives you life to you don't have to eat food but if you eat food it makes you stronger and gives you more health but if you don't have any food you're not just gonna die pointlessly in the middle of the woods like you don't have to worry about it. um and they structured everything out so you spawn in this world you're surrounded by all these stones you can go there's this raven who flies around teaches you tutorializes you doesn't keep you in a tutorial zone but lets you do your thing and pops in to talk to you and be like hey did you know you can do this hey it's not it's not sitting there saying chop down three trees before i let you do something else um, because I was hund uh, hundreds of hours, but tens of hours into that game, and he, the tutorial bird popped up again because I finally did something that like activated yeah. him from early on. And he appears as you earn things, even later in the game. Um, there's great bosses that are are tied to uh, unlocking the next like phase, Iron Age, whatever. Uh, going up, it has got a great, fantastic build system. Uh, the music is incredible. Uh, I I describe it as fantasy jazz. Um, it's just like low, yeah, lo-fi fantasy music. It's it's absolutely excellent. Um, and it's only in early access. Um, and also the devs seem really cool. They're like very down to earth. Very like, hey, we're gonna add this stuff. Hey, things take a while. They're not just trying to money grab or anything like that. Uh, so I'm very proud of them. I really like valheim it's oh it's so good i really want to play it again that is my number one pick folks i hope you thank you solid, solid pick i like it yeah see i will say i have not played valheim but i've watched the streams that you guys did not uh, most of the streams you guys did and it seems so much like so much fun i mean i i, I don't yeah. tend to like those kind of games and i was like I kind of wish I was playing with them while I was yeah, watching it. Like, so. The exploration yeah. is great. Uh, they just like, uh, like I said, they took everything that's in survival games, good or bad, looked at it and said, how can we make this like the least annoying to players and the most helpful to players? And they, they pretty much hit it on all of them. Yeah. Um, next up is G for Gibson. Hi. Um... I actually struggled a little bit with my list because I, I played a decent amount of games this year and some of them really stuck with me and some of them, I don't want to say they were bad, but they just kind of gelled together in terms of quality. And so it was hard kind of picking from them. Um, so let's start with my runner ups. First of all, it's a game that I finally got into this year. Perfect time. Had a lot of fun with Final Fantasy 14 folks. I have wanted to dive into an MMO for years. Basically, the only MMO I played was Elder Scrolls Online, and that's because I was working on the game and I had to play it. <laughs> um, 
and and only so because good. I was working like 60 hours a week playing Elder Scrolls Online <laughs> did I realize, hey, maybe MMOs are not awful. And once you get once you get past like the bad combat and all this stuff and the bad storytelling, there's actually some cool stuff in the mechanics, you know, like the whole cycle, you know, swapping things out, specking out your build and all that stuff. And then I was like, OK, well, I want to play an MMO. And Will and I went through server quests and all that stuff. And we knew that at the end we were going to play Final Fantasy 14. And it was just a point where I was like, I, I got to move in two months. I can't spend any money on a new game. But at the same time, I've got all this free time. So I convinced some people and we finally dove into Final Fantasy 14. And it's so good. It's just it's huge. Um, 90 percent, 95 percent of my playtime. I played more than 100 hours and 95 percent of that was free trial. And the only parts of it that were not free trial, I didn't have to go off the free trial. There were just some some extra benefits I wanted to do, you know, like making my own friends or joining a free company. But there's so much stuff in this game that is part of the free trial. Um, there's so much variety. Like, I didn't even realize until after I stopped playing, somebody showed that if you're a bard, there's actually a musical instrument that you're playing. Like, it's not like, I'm a bard, let me do my my music spell attack. Oh, it's yeah. like, no, you can actually play an instrument. It's crazy. Like, there's there's so much variety between the classes. There's so much content. Um, I want to be clear. This did not make my Game of the Year list only because I did not play the Endwalker DLC, which came out this year. I feel like if I had played the Endwalker DLC and enjoyed it as much as I had the rest of the game, then it definitely would have made the list. Um... The other game that uh, didn't quite make uh, my game of the year list, but I wanted to mention was Unpacking. Um, this was a game that came out uh, early out. November. It was a great Game Pass game. Um, I I knew I was hosting Extra Life from, I think it was like 5 to 8 a.m. And I was like, I need something that I can just sink my teeth into. And I installed a couple different games and Unpacking was one of them. And I started playing Unpacking. And it's just it's just so delightful. I mean, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with it, you're you're it's literally a pixel art isometric and you're just unpacking for somebody. That's all you know about them. There's no story. There's a couple like very small diary entries um, that they've written. But you just learn about the person and how their life is going through their moves. Um, and as somebody who did a big move this year, um, that really connected with me. And also the fact that the game design when you're unpacking, they they do there are requirements like you can't put a frying pan in the bathroom, but you can put it almost anywhere in the kitchen. So it's it's one of those things where um, I know I said about this on Extra Life, but it's things like uh, where does the air freshener go? Well, for me, the air freshener always goes on the back of the toilet. So once you're done pooping, it's right there for you, you know, and then you got to have at least one roll of toilet paper within reach of the toilet in case you need it. You know, it's it's stuff like that that let the game let me do that it let me be like no i like it this way not this way and it wasn't like oh you can't do that it lets you do that and that's just it's great perfect little indie game it's very cheap uh yeah. even if it wasn't on game pass i think it was 15 or 20 bucks nice and short only a couple hours and very experimental but nails it it knows what it's doing and it just nails that slice um so shall we get good. into my top three yes i want them I want you to. I have <sighs> no, I know what I know what one of them is. I have no idea what the other two are because you're the worst. I, <laughs> the worst is that I feel like the inkling of a sneeze, but it hasn't happened yet. I'm gonna blow my nose real quick. A little bit of anticipation. Do it. Let's hear some. Uh, I I'll blow wanna... my nose. Uh, give me some guesses. Oh, I think. I mean, obviously, inscriptions on that list. I think the other game on that list is something stupid. Um, Let's be a stupid. Let's get on into it. <laughs> Uh, let me cut, <laughs> let me cut my own suggested segment short. I know, jeez. Like the first one, surprise, surprise, it was a podcast gag, <laughs> but it ended up being an opportunity for personal growth. I'm talking about Mass Effect Legendary wow. Edition. Wow. Wow. Look, uh, I've been very wow. vocal about my personal history with Mass Effect. I tried to play the first one when it came out and I bounced off it pretty hard. Um, not just because of personal things, like I, I didn't really care about the story and the shooting didn't feel great, but also actual problems with the game, like the elevators. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mass Effect 2. No, Will, do you remember Mass Effect 1 launch elevators? It was like 45 seconds. It was oh, crazy. Get over it. Oh, I'm sorry. Going from one level of my ship to the next shouldn't take 45 seconds. I'm sorry. Get a book. Anyways. Uh, and the other thing is Mass Effect 2. Look, I think Mass Effect 2 is a great game, but anybody telling you that Mass Effect 2 is 
perfect entry into the series and you don't have to play the first one is lying to you. It's not a good entry to the series. You should play the first one. Um, I played these games and I really enjoyed Mass Effect 1, really enjoyed Mass Effect 2. I only played a couple hours of Mass Effect 3 and I think it's just because I was binging them too much that I fell off of it. I don't think we need to go into specifics about these games. They've already stood the test of time on their own. But I think that this game is like the gold standard of a remaster. Let's talk about it. These are games that you can play on consoles, but they've had some issues. The, the, the mechanics are a little dated. The graphics are dated. Um, they basically just bundled these, plus all the DLC, for $60. And then they respect and preserve the originals. <laughs> And they just remove the pain points. So, so you pay 60 bucks. You get an incredible trilogy. All of the trilogy. All of the DLC. You pop it in your console. And baby, it runs. 4K. Up res. It runs 60 frames per second. They've uh, standardized some of the controls across all three. So it's not like you're moving between crazy different control schemes. Um, they got rid of the elevators. Or at least massively sped up the elevators. It's just incredible. So being able to play this game as somebody who didn't like the original series and go... Shut up. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're having your We're laughing at weird little chair <laughs> guy over here. <laughs> oh, audio listener is so sorry. Oh. Uh, like being able to just hop into this like well loved trilogy for 60 bucks and get all of it, it's just so good. Uh I Kyle, I know you played this a little bit. What are you what are your thoughts on it? I, I thought about adding it to my my number three. I thought about it, but then I, I kind of realized like I it's it's more special for you because you found that you liked it. Like you found yeah. that you loved it. I already knew I liked it. So it was more of just like buying it was like a treat for me. And I yeah. got it on sale. So I didn't even pay full price because I'm, again, a cheap wow. bastard. Um, but it it is exactly what you said. It is the perfect distillation of how to do a modern day remaster. And yeah. there's there's hardly anything about it that I would say is worse off than I think like I, I don't think that there anything there is anything worse off than the originals as as opposed to the yeah. new one. Um, it's just it's just better in every way, and it looks good. It plays good. You have everything that they ever made for that series, aside from Andromeda, which we don't talk about. Um, That's correct. And <laughs> and which I actually bought because it was like four dollars, and now I have <laughs> it, and I guess I have to play it at some point. Um, it's it's just it feels so good to be to be able to say like, Hey, there was this trilogy a really long time ago that meant a lot to a lot of people. It's been updated for those same people and can also introduce new people who have certain expectations for graphical fidelity, for, um, customizability of, uh, you know, uh, uh, more wider, like technical specs and stuff. So it's nice that someone decided at, EA, I guess, to put in the time and effort it took to to do that for all these games and and to bundle it all together is, is really nice, um, which is probably the first nice thing I've said about EA in about 10 years. So you're yeah. welcome. Burn. Yeah, it's it's like I like I had thought about trying to give Mass Effect another shot, the same as I thought about any other series. You know, like I was thinking about playing um, Knights of the Old Republic and it's like, well, I guess I could play it on an Xbox backwards compatibility, but I'm to deal with graphics. I'm going to deal with those old mechanics, those old controls. And just like you said, having this remaster completely pain free, you pick it up. It's basically feels like a triple A modern title. Um, I, I had to put it on my game of the year list when I thought about this third slot. I wasn't sure about and I was like looking at all the games I played and when I thought about how much I enjoy this, how much time I put into it and how much of an incredible value it is, it's it's like almost as good as the orange box. It's just yeah. incredible. Uh, easily number three. Yeah. My second game. Look, this game was not made for me. Um, it's full of a lot of stuff that I normally bounce off of survival genre like medieval setting, like it's pretty, pretty lies, relies a lot on multiplayer. It's got, it's got some pretty tough boss fights. All of those things would push me away from the game. And actually I did not want to play this game, but having Will and, and Zach and other people play this game so much made me finally try and love Valheim as Woo! my number two game of the year. Pick. <laughs> um, I, I'm not going to, not to talk too much about this because Will, you kind of hit all the points that I talked about, but, um, the big thing about encouraging rather than punishing, like there are way too many survival games 
that go on. Survival is about punishing you. Oh, you ate the wrong thing? Well, now you're going to throw up all the time. Oh, you didn't eat enough? Well, now you're going to die. Why are you saying it's, it's so sexy? Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just like, they're just talking down to you so much. It's it's like when I when I DM for d and I have to fight off the urge to just punish my players all the time and be like, no, you're doing something stupid. So I'm going to make you suffer for it. Um, this doesn't do that. It's, it's exactly like you said, Will. it's like, look, you could do whatever you want. You don't have to eat anything in this game at all. If you, if you, if you never want to eat, but if you do, you get a bonus. You don't have to breed animals. You just don't have to, but if you do, you get a bonus. Like it's just, it's so good because the survival genre is a lot about punishing and like difficulty through obscurity, but also just like a lot of negative modifiers on you all the time. And this is the opposite. It, it just says, hey, we want you to enjoy this game. And these are the different ways that you can make it easier for you. Um, the other thing is uh, like the um, building the mechanics around core themes. So you talked about the tutorial bird. Like the tutorial bird pops up when you've discovered a new mechanic or something that they think you should know about. And like you said, that that can happen all throughout the game. And it's because pretty quickly early on, you realize nobody's going to tell you about something. And there isn't going to be a menu where they say, hey, you should go do this. Or here's something far down the tech tree that's grayed out that you should get to eventually. Like you learn about new things and you get new recipes by picking them up. So, for example, the first time you pick up a carrot, it goes, hey, now you know the recipe to carrot soup. And he goes, hey, uh, now you know how to do now you know how to build a, a, a hoe for farming. And it's just like, cool. So if I pick things up, new things up in the game, the first time I pick it up, I get a recipe. OK, well, then that means I need to go pick up and try everything I need to touch at least once. And it encourages you to do that. Um, and that's just that's just so cool. And then there's a similar thing with like the base layout where you get stat bonuses based on the things you have in your base, even though they're just aesthetic items like a bed, a flag. But you pretty quickly realize, oh, the stat boost is better if I have different things. I can't just have five beds or five flags. So then you go, oh, well, then I need to do this. I need to try that. I need to try that. So it really encourages you through those mechanics to embrace the core themes of explore the world, crafting, etc. Um and then, and then the final thing is just the aesthetics. Like, if you think about survival game on Steam, right? There's two aesthetics. Number one is uh, like Rust, Daisy, like uh, Arc, Ultra Asset Hardcore. Library. Yes, Asset Library, Grim Dark. <laughs> when it's night out, you can't see anything. And then the other one is um, the other one's like like Minecraft, Dragon Quest Builders. It's like ultra cartoony, uh, like Fortnite style. Um, and this is like, no, it's like, no, we're a fantasy Viking sim. So we're going to have like a really weird, like CRT esque, like po po uh, polygonal, like fog mist going on. Yeah. And we're going to have, what'd you call it? Like, like jazz fantasy music going yeah. on. And there's and that. Hey, oh, you go, you go. You're going to say it. No, no, you go ahead. Cause I think I was going to talk. I was going to say the else. motion blur, uh, like yes. the, the, uh, what's it called with miniatures, but they're not miniatures. Force perspective. Tilt shift. Tilt shift. Tilt shift. Yeah, it does like a weird tilt, tilt shift, shift yeah. thing. Yeah, it's great. Oh, uh, like uh, yeah. Octopath Traveler. Yeah, yeah. sort of like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. but but for but like third person three D world. Like so it's, it's kind of weird. Crazy. Yeah. And then and then the other thing is just just the way that they place things in the world. Like um, you're on a boat and you're traveling to an island. All of a sudden, this just sea serpent appears next to you, oh. and you're just like, oh god, <laughs> or or. When this happened to me, it terrified me because I didn't know this would happen. Like the sea serpent, I got kind of spoiled on, but I didn't know this was happening. We're sailing and we're trying to find this land, but we don't want to go onto land because we're passing by these dangerous lands. And I look over and through the fog, I can just barely see the bank of the of the land. And there's an there's a, there's an old man in a rope just standing oh, on the yeah. bank. And I'm just like, what's that? Who is it? What is it? Like we're on a multiplayer server and I'm just like, but it's just us. It's just our server. And it's like, who is that? And you're just like, oh, I see old man. It's this weird thing that happens every now and then. It's just like, what do you mean? <laughs> There's a creepy rope man just standing on the shore. It's just like the aesthetic choices they chose to be unique and then also incorporate all the way that all that through the soundtrack, all the textures, all the look, all the little gameplay designs is just really, really good. Final point I want to touch on this is just like th there are so many gosh darn tiddly wink and survival games out there 
And there's a lot of good ones. There's a lot of mediocre ones. There's a lot of bad ones. It's probably one of the top three genres on Steam by number of games. And Valheim, when it came out, ooh, baby daddy, did it hit hard. Like, it was crazy. It's For 2021, it's the number two Steam game for peak concurrent players. Like, if you remember, it hit. It hit heavy, and everybody loved it. Um, and I think that number is one. hugely impressive. Sorry? What's number one? It was uh, New World. Oh, is that what it's called? Right. New World, the, the Amazon MMO? The Amazon one, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's a huge testament to how, how well this game excels in a very overcrowded and overdone space. It's just, it's just crazy. So when I thought about how much fun I had with it, how much I should not like that game, but I ended up loving it and how much just time I spent on that server. I think by the time I got the server going, I'm sorry, by the time we reset the server and I joined and towards the end of it, I was putting in way more hours than everybody else, which was crazy. I was not expecting that. Um, it's easily my number two pick. Just, just incredible. And anything else on Valheim before we move on to my number one? I had something to say. I really don't remember. Oh, I was going to say my one knock against it isn't a real knock against it. Um, but you can't bring metals through the portal, which kind of seems counterintuitive to their whole thing, but it's only a knock against it because everything in that game is so rewarding that when you come across something punishing, you interpret it as bad. But it's really not bad. It makes sense why they do that. So it's not a knock against it. It's just it seems weird. But I, I still think it may make sense aesthetically and part of the game design. It kind of does. It just feels like it just feels like a game design slight misstep when everything else in the game is is really yeah, well totally. designed. Um, so my number one game. Look, I I don't want to sound pretentious. I don't want to sound judgmental. I don't want to sound hoity toity. I don't want to sound like my usual self. <laughs> but. <laughs> it is very difficult for me to pick any other game as game of the year because 15 minutes into this game, I knew it was a strong contender. Halfway through, it was basically a lock for game of the year. And by the time I finished it, I, I literally was racking my brain going, look, I'm going to be objective. I'm going to be open to other games. It's not the end of the year yet, but I'm pretty sure this is game of the year. Um, I'm absolutely, of course, talking about Inscription. Like this game just blew me away. I, uh, this game, I literally have started using it as a litmus test. I normally don't care about game of the year discussions except for uh, giant bomb because I listen to those. But I have been every time IGN, Kotaku, Polygon is whatever. Here's a game of the year list. I open it up and I go, okay, let's see how good you are at your job. Where's inscription? (laughs) And if it's not on the list, you're trash. And if it's not in your top three, (laughs) <laughs> you're slightly less trash, but you're still trash because it's literally like it, like it's it's crazy. I mean, before we hop into spoilers, like it is it's very difficult. To, let, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's do the spoiler alert. Jake, we'll give you a sign when you can come back on. We need to okay. dive into spoilers in this game because I've been waiting all year. All right. Well, not really, but put in something in the chat. I'll just mute you all. Okay, <laughs> okay that works. That works. Oh, my God. OK, so seriously, spoilers. We're going to be doing spoilers for Inscription. We can't tell you when we're going to be out of spoilers. Spoiler. But just, um... I'll label it, it on the YouTube this. video. Let me say this. This is going to sound counterintuitive. We have a very small fan base. There's probably nobody listening to this. But if you were listening to this, and you were at all interested in Inscription, don't listen to anything we say. We, we don't did listen get to some, any of these spoilers. We did get some comments. Uh, a Zach Crosby commented. Oh. I remember, he says, I remember seeing that old guy. That was... Oh, from Valheim. Okay, oh, and terrifying. then uh, a communist tungsten commented, "Is that the Numa Numa guy?" Oh, he's talking about Will. <laughs> Are you talking about <laughs> me? No, or me? But yeah, so, so seriously though, we're going to talk about spoilers for Inscription, and if you have any interest in playing that game, it is very important that you that you you turn this off because the game is still fantastic, but some of the biggest things are about how these surprises come. And we don't want to spoil you. So are are we ready for spoilers, gentlemen? Do it. Do it. Okay, look, I let's just go through like like I can't be, let's just go through step by step the moments at which my mind was literally blown. Like moments when I literally stepped back from the computer, hands over my mouth, just going, Oh my god, what is happening? <laughs> uh the first one is the one that Kyle, you and I were talking about, which is you start the game 
it's a card based game, right? So you, you start the game on the table and you got your, you got your hand of cards and you got your, and they teach you, they're like, look, you press this button to go forward and look at the table. You press this button to go back to your hand. And then 15 minutes in, they're like, Hey, press the back button again. That's how you stand up. And you're like, what? They're like, yeah, of course you can stand up, go walk around. And you press the back button again and you stand up from the table. <laughs> it's crazy. It Wild. also, oh, it's so it, it also, it also helps that in, in the first section of the game, um, and I guess the other sections too, but the movement is, is stilted. It's, it's, yes. and I think that actually helps with like the wow factor because you back up and it's so quick and you're like, there's more to this room. You yeah. turn and you're like, holy crap. Yeah. And it, it, it just keeps doing that continually through, through the game. But yeah, that, that first moment, I, I knew it was coming I, because you, yeah. you mentioned it and I yeah. was still like, oh my God. Uh, and then there's so many, so many little details um with the the different puzzle pieces with the clock with yeah um, but there's there's an escape room that you can mess around with to get cards to then go back to the card game yeah oh so good so and you can good. go get you can go get extra teeth uh yes. over from the skull i was um, really i was really stupid with the the um not the wardrobe puzzle, whatever the, the puzzle is where there's like three layers. I didn't know oh, how to yeah, do it. I just kept moving I stuff around. I brute forced all of them yeah, before I yeah. understood I, how the I was like, I was like, I so can't, difficult. I was like, I can't yeah. figure it out. And I, I was like, I didn't, I know I didn't try this combination. I didn't try this combination. And then it would open and I'd be like, okay. And then another one would come up. Yeah. And I was like, oh, even at the God. end when yeah. I, I basically knew it. how to play the game. I still couldn't. I was like, how? I can't figure these out. It's, They're impossible. it's like chess where you have to. I realized you have to literally resolve the cards on the table, even if it's like multiple, multiple rounds. Yeah, and it was it's just, weird. It's too much for me yeah. to keep track of. Um, yeah. But um, the next probably the next mind blowing moment was when you die and he's just like, look, I'm going to take your picture and yeah. that's going to be your oh. card for the next round. I was just oh. like. Oh, it's such a it's such a unique take oh, on God. permadeath because it's yes. like semi permadeath where it's like, yep. no, dying is helpful sometimes. And like sometimes you die and that death card, when that comes back into the deck or if it comes back in the deck, it's like, holy shit, this is a really good card. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a one cost seven yeah. damage. Oh, and I, then later yeah. on, when all of those show back up in boss fights. Oh, my yeah. God. My um, <laughs> I had a card called Kojima that was zero cost. <laughs> It had three three health and seven damage. Mm. Yeah, and I just so uh, every good. time I got it, beast. so happy. Yeah. Um. Probably, honestly, the biggest surprise in the game was, like you said, Will, you finish the card game, and it's like, great, you beat me, and then and then it has this weird thing where you get the camera, and then you take a picture of him, and he's trapped in a card. And uh, th this is one of the knocks with the game is that I it, you got stuck in that black room and I was like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And I, I had to look it up and people were like, no, it's OK. Press the reset, save or whatever yeah. that button yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but you do that. And it's a freaking FMV, y'all. I was just sitting there going, oh. that's when Maggie, Maggie walked in while I was watching it. And she goes, are what you are you watching? watching? Are you watching a she literally was like, are you watching them a YouTube channel? I was like, I was playing a game and it turned into this and I don't know what's going on. I can't believe they spoiled that in the in the trailers. I know. Like they I, really I shouldn't didn't, have. That's when I, I stood up, swore and ran because I had no yes. idea what was happening. Oh so I, I watched the trailer. I don't remember that being in the trailer. I'm sure it is, but I must have like blocked it out or something. It shows the I, think it was, I think it was green. later. Yeah. I think it was later trailers because I remember there was a trailer, I think at the Devolver E3, maybe that was just the cabin. I think the one that that's the one that I watched because I yeah. was like, I want to I want to know what what this game sort of feels like before I play it. And that's the one that I watched because I don't remember getting that much spoiled. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I, I just I really like how it expands from there. Like, I really enjoyed the second act where it's not just a different genre. It's a different mm -hmm. genre because it fits the, the overarching FMV story of yep. there's a game company going through different iterations of this game design. And then also within that, they're introducing four new mechanics that work really well. Um, and, I played Bones. Of, I was an undead bones. boy. I did Bones, too. I, I, did, I, I, I forget magic. who I picked. I think I picked the wizard guy, but I ended up going with bones because bones are. Oh, uh, yeah. It was just great. like where it adds so much mechanics. Um, and then it starts to like, I don't want to say tease, but it starts to like ink out the overarching story of, of the four people. Um, I wasn't crazy about the the setting of the third act. I didn't really like 
it felt I it felt a little bit of a step backwards because you're back at the table like you were in the first act. And I also didn't like the aesthetic as much. Yeah. But it's the the way that it brought in all four card mechanics and started to weave them together. And my God, those boss fights in the third act. Oh, those so boss good. fights. And it was oh, nice my, because hard drive won. It wasn't oh a, my it, God. Was, it wasn't a roguelike anymore. So you weren't worried yeah. about like no. losing a ton of progress. You were just like yeah. at that point you were adept enough that they could make it hard without costing you too much. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. And I think yeah. that was also um I just want to hurry this up so we can get Jake back, but the in the in the ending the ending sequence the the moment I, I i think i teared up was the um stuff's getting deleted and the scale gets deleted and yes. leshy says it's okay we don't have to keep score will you just keep playing and yeah, that's I'm so poignant like even now i'm oh. getting goosebumps it's just so good yeah, it, it was so better good. than everyone else's because you spent so much time with him it's it was such just a like good ugh. development of his character and it really just I, it it hits i mean it's weird to get emotional over like a card game but it's so much more than just a card game and it, it yeah it, it's 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 so well done i i'll just say some some closing thoughts for me on inscription um <laughs> kind of going back to me being quote unquote judgmental hoity toity it it, it really <laughs> was very difficult for me to consider any other game as game of the year because like I, I over the holiday break, I was thinking like, oh, Ratchet and Clank's supposed to be really good. Maybe I should play that. Returnal's supposed to be really good. Maybe I should play that. But I'm, I was literally sitting there going, Ratchet and Clank may be the greatest like action adventure game I have ever played. But that doesn't matter because Inscription is so much more than that. Inscription like pushes the boundary so much and it takes so many crazy out of the box risks and it pays off on almost every single one of them that even if it didn't pay off, even if it only paid off on half of them, it deserves so much more credit than a, than a genre game done 10 out of 10 style. Like I like I will always reward and appreciate something for trying something new and innovating even if it's imperfect versus like the perfect duplicate of an existing genre or implementation. Yeah. And so like, it really was me sitting here going like, I remember when I played, I was like, what's, what's left like halo infinite. Maybe that'll be better. And I was just like, it can't be. And so that's yeah. like, like I was joking about, I wasn't joking about the litmus test. I'm literally looking at all these lists and I'm going, how the fuck can you pick Forza horizon five, which is the same freaking game for the fifth time. <laughs> over inscription you know and it's just or death loop which is just like a triple a like pacification of some crazy indie game design ideas over inscription <laughs> like what are you doing people and it's just like it's it's yeah. just so good and so out of the box and it works so well that it's it has to be my number one i i was literally handcuffed i can't pick anything else any it's, it's any final any final spoilers or i can bring jake back let's let's bring jake back i think pointed just, jake it's so good so good so good um, Ian, I will say I did a quick Google search because it just occurred to me. Um, yeah, you can 3D print the things from that game. Yeah, the 3D designer uh, I made really a bunch care. of them available. Um, oh, I'm, I I'm not one of those awesome. like 3D. I I don't really do the whole. Yeah, I guess you don't do 3D prop. print props yeah. and like memento stuff. I'm more like mechanic. But I realize I'm not saying that's better. But that's most just, of them are made of wood, I so I might have Zach carve them. CNC. I I I need to ask Zach if he can make me a wrist rest for my keyboard. Oh, he might I be want, able to. I want one. I yeah. and I think he could do it. I my one friend from work can kind of do stuff like that. He does like wood and resin. And I was like, I kind of want to support Zach more than my friend from work. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh, I'll ask him. He might be making yeah. me an Iceland with a resin C. I That's so cool. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's that's my that's my game of the years. Uh, just quick recap. Hit. Uh, no, that's that's your list. Uh, Mass Effect <laughs> Legendary Edition number three, Valheim number two, and Inscription a solid, inevitable, irrefutable number one. Awesome. Uh, let's kick it over to Jakey Boy. I'll say before I get into my list, I am just like beyond thrilled that Inscription is on y'all's list being. Uh, kind of on the Daniel Mullins bandwagon it's, since 2016. It's, it's really funny that it's on all of our lists and you're the one who has it. I, 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 I will, I will yeah, preface I, that only because I have not yet had a chance to play it. I'm just mm. surprised you don't like it, Jake. That's, yeah, that's, that's, I that's mean, Hyper Light Drifter, it's wild yeah. to me. Actually, yeah. Jake, I mean, I've never played. I will some say... Of the, 
as soon as you play it, message me when you're done because you'll be on the next episode of Local Chat to talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. Just I mean yeah. I I'm I have been excited for it for years, and so I'm yeah. I'm very excited to finally sit down with it. I mean, I, just, things... I want to be able to take the time to do it all in one go because that's how I did Pony Island. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's a game that probably will work better. I mean, I don't know. You can tell me if you think I should parse it up or not. Uh, I, there's good stopping point in that game. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Um, okay. But I was actually just going to check what my hour count on it was because then that can give you a good... I also do... I do love the save system. Like, it, the amount of times I exited out and went back in because I screwed up a card thing or whatever, and it was like, oh... Oh, oh I didn't even know about that. I just stuff. took yeah. the L. <laughs> Everybody, um, Pony Island's under two hours. So. I did 11 hours. For it was... It was... Uh... So, I yeah, don't know we can compare... It says Kyle... 6.2. 6.2. I play, I, it didn't take me that long. Oh, I, um, I spent forever in in certain sections. I don't know what it's just so good. so good. I I think I accidentally left it open at one point. So I, I did that with be. the saboteur, and that's why I have forty eight hours in that. <laughs> um, okay. go, Jake. Give us that so, list. Yeah, so I've got my honorable mentions. Um, inscription being, you know. I want to play it. I'm going to play it. And it's going to be retroactively my game of the year. So we're just putting that out there. Um, a couple ones, uh, Hitman 3. Yeah. Which I was kind of surprised that didn't end up, or maybe I just wasn't reading the right lists, but I think maybe because it was a January release, a lot of people have kind of just forgotten about it. Um, Cause that's, I think a year old later this month. Yeah. Um, but I played Hitman 3. I can't tell if Ian is frozen or if he's just really still. He's, he's okay. very still. <laughs> uh, Hitman 3, I played having not played Hitman 1 or Hitman 2. So I played Hitman Ooh. 3, and I liked it enough that I went and I bought Hitman 2. And then I played Hitman 2 tw- all the way through, plus DLC, twice wow, in a good. week. Um. So very good, very. Can we can we just mention real quick? I'm I'm assuming that you bought them. I don't want to say inside of Hitman Three, but that then unlocked basically like it is a single launch that gets you all Hitman content. That's that's so good. That's fantastic. I love that they did that. I I will say, having I only have Hitman Two. Which one do I have? Hold on, I'm looking. I only have Hitman Two. Buying that game and then realizing that that was how the system was laid out was not fun to realize oh. because it was like it was like oh I thought this because I thought they were like completely separate. I didn't realize that there was like an overarching thing, but um, like storyline. And so I was like, well, now I, I like I have to go back and play one, so I'm gonna have to spend money on that. I'm gonna have to spend money on three. I thought it was like a standalone thing. But you would have had to do it anyways because if you bought three, you'd still have to buy one and two to get the mission. Was that how two worked? Because I don't have Hitman one. I only have Hitman two. Yeah, you have to. You still have to pay for each game. But you can play Hitman one levels if you own them inside of two. That's and you can play. That's what, that's what I meant. Is that like yeah, yeah, the yeah. levels were locked off? Like it wasn't. It wasn't fun yeah, coming yeah. into this game that I bought. And I was like, oh, there's stuff locked. Oh, I um, see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. It can be a little confusing because you you think the content's locked, but really it's just showing. It's kind of like with Call yeah. of Duty Warzone when you launch it, and they're like, there's four games in here, and you don't own any of them. I think you know? I think that's that's what I was coming from was like the Call of Duty stuff, and I wasn't expecting to find us not an exact system like that but a similar system like that within hitman yeah. so i was like what is this but now yeah. i understand it it makes sense sorry no, hitman 3 <laughs> sorry <laughs> hitman 3 um outer wilds echoes of the eye i nice. actually have not gotten to roll credits on that i feel like <laughs> i'm really really close but um just as far as dlc goes um being a pretty great standalone dlc and also just continues to kind of spin the Outer Wilds formula on its head with some really neat stuff. Um, very good. Uh, and then there's a couple, it's just a lot of games I haven't played, which I won't necessarily talk about because that list is a mile long. But the one game I have played is uh, Nuts, the squirrel surveillance game made by uh, our friend Yoon from Iceland, amongst others. Oh! Um, so nuts. Friends of Subpixel. We should have a list of those games. Um, that's very good. It's it's quite charming. It's like a 
it's another one of those games where it kind of starts as one thing and then <clears throat> sort of becomes something else as it goes on. But I'm a sucker that has big chunky CRT screens in it, and it's you. You know, you're in like a like a, a wildlife, like a natural park, and you're observing squirrel nighttime squirrel feeding habits so you have to like set up trail cams and then the next day you come in and you review the footage and then you like move the trail cams and eventually you'll find out like where the squirrels are coming from or going to um it's pretty neat and that's really the whole gameplay loop um and i think it's it's on switch and it's on steam 20 20 bucks on steam okay it's goes on sale pretty often i think oh and Um, torfy uh was on it too that's cool it's a yeah it's several it's a couple of the that's uh, awesome jam isolation cool. game jam alums um so without then getting into the mile long list of other games i haven't played but i want to play but i'm not going to talk about my list is number three uh four quarters loop hero nice um mm. which i i was on my radar since i saw the, the first little um I follow Devolver Digital on several social platforms, and so I'm always kind of seeing the stuff that they're going to be publishing soon. And Loop Hero, it's charming and very simple on the surface, but then there's a bunch of stuff under the hood once you dive into it um, that'll draw you in, and suddenly you're like, oh, I've been playing this for a while. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> just watching this little guy go around yeah. this little but i appreciate that it's it's like a choose your own roguelike i guess would be yeah. one way to describe yeah. it that's a good one um where mm. it's it's got all those roguelike elements but then you have a bit of agency in what comes next um and i i've been really enjoying that i also have not rolled credits on that um uh i don't know how many i think there's four chapters and i'm I still have yet to beat the boss of the third chapter. Jake, have um, you rolled credits on Hyper Light Drifter? Because I don't believe you if you did. I think you're just... <laughs> he did, but he hated it. <laughs> yeah, he hated it. Uh, Jake, I haven't rolled credits it. on that either. I've been meaning to go back to it. Um, I I don't even remember how far I was. I unlocked a couple characters. Um, but I agree. I, I think, think there's... I've only unlocked three classes. If there's yeah, I, more... think, I think I did three. So maybe we're about the same place. But I think they... As far as aesthetic and gameplay, I think they nailed it. Oh yeah, um, it's great. It make it yeah, makes it me feel like great. I'm playing uh, a uh, can't think of it. Anyways, video Amiga game. makes me think I'm <laughs> playing an Amiga. Oh. Uh, yeah, or like it's a got, it, the the Commodore. menus are, are are pretty chunky, and it's got that juxtaposition of super simple pixel art and then really complicated pixel art. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Number two, speaking of Hyperlight Drifter, is Heart Machine's sophomore release, Solar Ash. Ooh, see, now this is interesting because I remember talking to you about it and it sounded like you were a little chill on it. So I'm curious to hear I, how I how went back. I did not replay fully through it twice. I'm, I'm going to finish my second playthrough, you know, probably sometime this week. Um, now that I was able to sit with it and, and play th- and start to play through it again, it, it really, I did, I did vibe with it. Um, okay. I think it was one of those of, I have I have played all the way through Hyperlight Drifter eight times, um, Minus. on three different <laughs> platforms, um, and so being so familiar with that game. And then seeing, like, initially seeing, like, okay, Heart Machine's working on a second game. What's it going to be? Oh, it's 3D? That's interesting. Oh, it's like a Shadow of the Colossus-like? That's Mm -hmm. also interesting. It was just kind of like what you would have expected a follow-up to Hyper Light Drifter to be. It was not in any way apart from tenuously similar aesthetically you 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 can see you know you can look at it and you can be like okay that does seem like a a translation of hyperlight drifters 2d pixel art into a 3d world i i can see there's similar color palette there's similar vibes and like the architecture and stuff um but beyond that essentially they threw out the whole playbook and they're like let's do 
It's going to be a, it's going to have a narrative. It's going to have full voice acting. It's not really going to have combat. It's mostly going to be traversal mm-hmm. um, and like type puzzles. Um, and so coming from Hyper Light Drifter into that kind of cold hat did have an initial kind of friction of like, okay, what's going on here? But then sitting with it and playing it more, um, I think it's really solid because the traversal is really solid. It feels amazing. Um, and that's fun. kind of, I think it's, yeah. And it's, I think on local chat last week, I kind of mentioned it's, it's a little bit of shadow of the Colossus. It's a little bit of Mario galaxy and it's a little bit of like Sonic the Hedgehog, um, which just is a interesting <laughs> concoction. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I, I really liked it. I knew it was going to be, or I didn't, I guess, no. I assumed it was going to be somewhere up in an end of the year list for yeah. me personally, because I'm just a big fan of the work that Heart Machine does. Um, and the score, obviously great. I couldn't, I saw something, I didn't pay enough attention when the actual credits rolled the first time because um, I got distracted with my dog or something. But I know that Disaster Piece, I don't know if he wrote all the music, but I know that he, he music directed the score so i think some of it's his but some of it might also be some other composers i he, need to he confirm gave it his that. blessing who knows um but the soundtrack is great and i think all the voice acting is really great for being you know full voice acted um yeah it's good. nice awesome my game of the year is <laughs> it will be Certainly. Um, But currently, my current game of the year, which will be my number two, and then Solar Ash will become my number three. My current game of the year is Grizzly Games Islanders Console Edition, Um, which I'm certain that I'm likely the only person in this this weird branch of the game's journalism sphere that has chosen this game for my game of the year. Um, I think I saw it on a couple lists, maybe. It's I can't remember. Delightful. It's <laughs> so peaceful. It's so charming, both in its visual presentation and its gameplay. I think similar to a little bit like maybe similar to unpacking. Um where you're just kind of given not a completely blank canvas, but a mostly blank canvas upon which yeah. to just build a little town. And um, being someone who who did have kind of a big move in the middle of the year and just kind of, you know, being an extension of 2020 and all that mentally and emotionally entails, finding this just really nice, really quiet, cozy game to sit back and play anytime I was like, I just want to, you know, I don't want to play, you know, Destiny is a lot on my brain. Let me yeah, play something a little simpler, a little <laughs> calmer. Um, the worst. Shut up. And I've played like 350 hours in it. So it's easily I, I, my I have most to tell you, Jake, played game of the year. Yeah, I, I also bought it. Yeah, it yeah, was I, last week. I bought it recently because you mentioned it and you were like, it's really good and I needed a chill game. And I played probably, probably five, six hours over the weekend. And I, let me tell you, definitely chill i really loved it something i i really appreciated is um well first of all do you play the score the high score mode do you play the the high score mode mode. the sandbox mode is is too open for me i want a tiny rule set to give me like i can't just if i build i'm not satisfied with it i need to like yeah yeah i think something i really appreciated was like the high score mode it's it, there is scores that you get for placing buildings and getting them in collaboration and separate from negative points buildings etc mm. but they don't try to make it super difficult and like the biggest indication of that is when you're placing a building you before you place it they tell you how many points you're going to get it's a big mm. number and it's just like this is how many points you put it here you're going to get three points and you just move your mouse a couple pixels to the left and it's like you'll get 10 points for there and it's like like they're not trying to be difficult about it because if they were being difficult about it it would be put down the building wherever you want and then we're going to tell you how many points you got but no this mm-hmm. is just like look if you're not sure just wiggle your mouse all over the map and oh yeah. my god was that a 40 in that corner yeah. holy <laughs> crap balls and you just put it over there and you're like 40 points that feels 
great and it's just yeah. like like there is a game and there are mechanics to it but it's very simple it's very calming it's just make big number bigger and it's mm. just it's it's good man it's just great comic great yeah, podcast yeah, yeah. game too just mm, and, and, delightful. oh yeah for sure yeah i can i can put on you know some something else while i'm playing it but it, at some point as i was maybe probably like 100 hours into it i found myself like head cannoning little stories of the oh, cities right as right. we've lost jake <laughs> yes, so like, yes. Put, you know i put uh, the, there's a lot of trees over here so i'm gonna start a little logging community and then you know i got a mansion i'm like uh, p- mansion probably wouldn't be over near the logging community let's go put it <laughs> that's where the poor here. people live <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. yeah. i keep the poors away from the they're next to the sea i'm they gonna they set up my work camps it. over here by the caves <laughs> yeah yes. and, and, and then, yeah figuring out you know, because it, it's I think I, I, I mentioned a little it's a little bit tetris in a way. Yep. You, once you learn the shapes of the buildings, you can start kind of playing around with how you arrange them to form, you know, a more mm-hmm. pleasing flow or whatever. F- figuring out but, where to put the different casts in your system. And yeah, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> literally okay, well, some, <laughs> some of the casts are in the game like there's a circus. <laughs> And the mm-hmm. circus, you get negative points for the circus being near the mansions because the yeah, mansions they're like, they don't, you don't want that here. Right? Yeah. It's, wow. Uh, it's, and you it, can't I, put the temple near your manufacturing center. You have to put yeah. it near houses. Of Where did the undesirables go? Did you figure yeah. out a place for them? I go in the sea. There are huts. Um, <laughs> there are, there huts. are huts that you can oh, put. Oh, there like, we go. Over, we figured like, it out. Far away. <laughs> yeah. Next to the shaman. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's like... You are know, there like you prisons? It. A genuine question. No. Okay. There I would think prisons. that'd be cool to like. But now, now that you mention it, um, I, that is definitely what I was doing. Was it's not just building it, but also the way they dole out the buildings as you're going through the progression of the island. Like you said, it's usually woodcutters first. So you're like, oh well, it started as a mining settlement. Then you're like, mm-hmm. oh, but then this sea this sea top view was too good, so they decided to build a little village there and. You definitely start to get, I I don't want to call it emergent gameplay, but it's kind of just like a natural story that you start to tell yourself as you're Mm. placing these buildings. Really nice. I love it. That's all. It's great. So delightful. Yeah. Um, Um, Yeah. And then whenever I play Inscription, we can add an epilogue to this. That's like, oh, Inscription is Jake's game of the year. That's, um, so I I don't want to be so bold here. Um, mm. but I know we came into this without, uh, any like connotation of us selecting anything or anything like that, but I feel like there is some didn't. sort of larger consensus here among the four of us that I wouldn't feel bad if we officially announced some sort of game of sub pixel Twitter right now of I've, Subpixels obviously... game of the year. Yeah, it's definitely okay going to be. It's definitely going to be twelve minutes. I think. Yes, all, obviously, yeah, best family game, game. Twelve minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Daisy um, Ridley and Willem Dafoe's twelve minutes. I, I seriously though, I'm okay with us saying Inscription is Subpixel's game of the year. Yes, yes. you guys okay with that? Okay, like, cool. So I will say officially oh for the second time now. Crazy. Um, Subpixel's 2021 game of the year is Inscription. Um, that's Let just... me run down the list. I, I can yes. run down the full list. Run down the All right. List. So um, first up, we had Kyle. Uh, I'm going to be going from three to one. He picked Resident Evil Village, Metroid Dread, and his number one was Inscription. Will picked Hitman 3, Inscription, and his number one was Valheim. Uh, I picked Mass Effect Legendary Edition, Valheim, and my number one, Inscription. And Jake picked Loop Hero, Solar Ash, and his number one, Islanders, with a big asterisk pending inscription Mm -hmm. um and our overall number one pick game of the year 2021 without a doubt with a bullet baby it's up there it lives up there it's inscription god what an incredible game what an incredible game it deserves everything i like i'm not joking uh, like by the time i finished that first act and things happened i i literally knew it was my game of the year how quickly did you guys know or how quickly did you know that it was way up there in contention Pretty pretty I'd, early on. I'd say like within an hour. Yeah. Just I, incredible. I think I'll say watching like having you all on mute and watching your expressions as you were talking about it was just running through the gamut of all the emotions I've ever felt playing a <laughs> Daniel Mullins uh, game. So um, I um, very excited. I think the only reason on my list Valheim beats it out is not anything to do with the games. It's just I had such a fun time playing valheim 
with Ian and Chris and Zach that it was just like that, like kind of it was like that Minecraft feeling. I think that's <laughs> kind of why it beat it out. So sorry, yeah. my emotions got in the way, Daniel yeah. Collins. But um, I'm going to start up the music here. We're going to get ready. Jake, um, I don't know if you want to. Uh, you're kind of my de facto uh, graphic designer for Subpixel. Hi, our. Oh. Um, if you want to whip up some sort of game of the year graphic for okay. for inscription for inscription okay. and tweet that yeah. out and uh throw it at daniel mullins get a, if you get want a to postcard him. made and mail it to daniel oh that'd be pretty yes and that would actually be with a knife sweet. that's covered in blood. yeah you know where <laughs> find out where he lives and we'll bury it near his house and send him the coordinates <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah totally um so yeah Here's if you don't mind name. doing that i that would be awesome uh i i as soon as uh, Kyle said inscription, I knew I was like, maybe we are going to decide a game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, that's just crazy, folks. Thank I'm... you so much for. Oh, Kyle, go. No, no, no. I was just going to say, I'm so glad that Ian recommended it because that meant I got to play it because yeah, he was so passionate about it. So it it's yeah. really down to Ian's uh, good taste, I guess. Which it, I never it, thought it, I would it, say. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Twilight Princess. No, but it's like you said, it, yeah. it just it hits you right away and you're just like, I can't I can't think of anything else. This yeah. is game of the year. You have to play it, you know? Yeah, it's it's so good. Uh folks, thank you so much for tuning in to the Game of the Year podcast for uh Subpixel here on Local Chat. Um as I titled it, I think I titled it The Games That Were 2021. I don't know. We gotta think of a good game of the year name. It's like an in memoriam. I, <laughs> I was gonna do the best best of the yearies. Is that funny? that's not bad best of that's the yearies okay i'll switch it to that uh so don't pay attention to the title um uh, folks thank you so much you can find all of our content subpixelfilms.com you can find all of our stuff subpixel at subpixel team and all the social medias uh thank you for watching and we will see you all next week